I'm Aaron Murray, and this is Israeli News Live. Let's start out by examining what's going on in China, a new development that I wanted to show before we get into the Middle East and what's happening around Israel. First, we see right here on the uh, Nusser website, China is creating a new, quote, theology for Christians, one that will be better one that will better integrate with Chinese culture, says an official. The number of Christians in China is on the rise. In fact, a fact that's making the country's government quite nervous and causing tensions between police and worshipers. To address this issue, the state media reports that China is creating its own, quote, Christian-based theology that will conform more closely with the government's way of doing things according to the South China Morning Post. The construction of Chinese Christian theology should adapt to China's national condition and integrate with Chinese culture, says a director with the country's religious affairs department. No more details were offered. We will keep our eyes on this for any further developments. Now let's turn our eyes to the Middle East. We'll start with the Jerusalem Post today. Islamic State fighters sweep north in Iraq, defeating Kurdish forces. Islamic State militants extended their gains in northern Iraq on Thursday, seizing three more towns and gaining a foothold near the Kurdish region, witnesses said. The advance came after the Sunni militants infected, uh, inflicted a humiliating defeat on Kurdish forces in a weekend sweep of the north. The Independent says that ISIS takes Iraq's largest Christian town as residents told to leave, convert, or die. CBS News is reporting that ISIS is back on the offensive in Iraq. Sunni militants from the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, ISIS, group on Thursday seized Iraqi's largest dam placing them in control of enormous power and water resources and access to the river that runs through the heart of Baghdad. After a week of attempts, the armed gunmen successfully stormed the Mosul Dam and forced Kurdish forces to withdraw from the area. Residents living near the dam told the Associated Press. Tens of thousands of Christians flee Iraq from militant group ISIS, the Express reports. Jihadists took control of Kur uh, jihadists took control of Karkush and the surrounding areas, sending a quarter of the population retreating to the autonomous Kurdistan area. ISIS captured the town after Kurdish forces withdrew from the Nineveh province, which is 250 miles from the capital Baghdad overnight. Joseph Thomas, the Chaldean Archbishop of Kukirk, and a word I can't hardly pronounce, <laughs> said, I know that the towns of Kukirk and Tel Kaif, Bartelia, and Karamelish, that she'll have to do for now, have been emptied of their original population and, and are now under the control of the militants. It's a catastrophe, a tragic situation. The, Ara the Guardian is reporting that Iraqi's largest Christian town abandoned as its ISIS advance continues. The UN, UN officials say that an estimated 200,000 new refugees are seeking sanctuary in the Kurdish north from Islamic extremists. 40,000 Iraqis are stranded on mountain as ISIS jihadists threaten death. The Telegraph reports the Islamic State pulls down church crosses in northern Iraq as 200,000 flee. 200,000. Let's take a look at this video.
As the Islamic State made another dramatic push through northern Iraq, tens of thousands fled their towns and villages before the militants, who were notorious for beheadings, arrived. But the Yazidis of the town Sinjar were especially terrified. The Islamic State, whose methods seem excessive even to al-Qaeda, regards the minority ethnic group as devil worshippers, making them prime candidates for the sword. Tens of thousands fled the weekend assault on Sinjar and are now surrounded. Many panicked Yazidis scrambled to find water and food for their children before rushing to surrounding mountains. We heard sounds of mortars and in the morning they entered Sinjar. So we fled to the mountain and those who stayed there are now suffering from thirst. They have no water. They also took girls and raped them. They said that Yazidis have to be converted to Islam. This cannot happen. Where are the officials? No one has looked after us and no one asks us about the fate of the Yazidis. The Yazidis are followers of an ancient religion derived from Zoroastrianism and are spread over northern Iraq and part of the country's Kurdish minority. The UN Children's Agency said families who fled the area are in immediate need of urgent assistance including up to 25,000 children stranded in the mountains. CBS News is reporting the Pentagon is considering airdrops to the 15,000 Iraqi refugees fleeing from ISIS. The Pentagon is looking at conducting emergency airdrops to the estimated 15,000 stranded ethnic minority Yazidi in northern Iraq, reports CBS News National Security Correspondent David Martin. A decision is expected today. Martin says if the U.S. Military, military takes drops, or makes drops rather, the transport planes would almost certainly be escorted by fighters. Now this is a very important moment for our country because if we fly over an army that has missiles that can shoot down airplanes, if something does happen, we will be dragged into this Middle East war also. Bear that in mind. Islamic State militants have wreaked havoc across Iraq, leaving many Iraqis dead, others displaced, and religious minorities like the Yazidi begging for help. <laughs> The Yazidi are descendants of Kurds but consider themselves distinct. They follow an ancient religion derived from Zoroastrianism, making them an especially vulnerable target of Islamic State militants, forcing Islam or death throughout the areas it overtakes. We heard sounds of mortars, and in the morning the Islamic militants entered Sinjar. We fled to the mountains, and those who stayed there are now suffering from thirst. They have no water. They also took the girls and raped them. They said the Yazidis have to be converted to Islam. Their plight doesn't stop there. The thousands who fled to the neighboring mountains are now stranded without food or water in the summer heat. They have blocked the road to the mountains and the road down the mountains. There is no water and people are now dying from thirst. Children are dying and are being buried under the rocks. With no relief in sight, the Yazidi hope their plea for help does not fall on deaf ears. Michael Holmes, CNN, Atlanta. The Kurds joined forces to confront jihadists in Iraq. Nor Northern Iraqi Kurdish forces say they are being joined by Kurdish separatists from Turkey and Syria to confront jihadists holding Mosul. To its northwest, thousands of refugees remain trapped in the hills, short of food, and, I may add, 
also short of water. CNN World is reporting that the United States is considering airstrikes in Iraq. The United States is considering airstrikes in Iraq in response to militant surge in northern areas that has left minority groups trapped by fighting, a U.S. official told CNN. The situation is nearing a humanitarian catastrophe. Tens of thousands of innocent civilians are reported to have been displaced, fleeing persecution, and we are gravely concerned for their health and safety, including the vulnerable ethnic and religious minority communities who have been specifically targeted by ISIL. The cold and calculated manner in which ISIL has targeted defenseless Iraqis, like the Yazidis and Christians, solely because of their ethnic and religious identity, demonstrates a callous disregard for human rights, and it is deeply disturbing. Uh, in particular, we're concerned about the welfare of the large community of Iraqi Yazidis who are stranded on Mount Sinjar without food, water, or shelter, and the Iraqi Christians who have been forced to flee their, from their villages in the region. We're deeply concerned about reports that ISIL has abducted as many as several hundred girls from these vulnerable communities. We're working intensively with the government of Iraq, or the Iraqi security forces, and the Kurdish authorities in the immediate area to support their efforts to address the humanitarian situation in Sinjar. And in terms of what the U.S. might be able to do to stop this, is the uh, president considering things along the lines of humanitarian aid? Might he consider going as far as airstrikes against ISIL to address this? Well, Josh, first and foremost, as I mentioned, uh, Iraqi authorities and Kurdish authorities are focused on this very specific threat to the nation uh, of Iraq and to the vulnerable populations that live in these areas. So the United States uh, government, as well as the United States military, uh, is supporting the ongoing uh, efforts of the Iraqi uh, officials and Kurdish officials to address this uh, urgent humanitarian crisis that exists. Uh, it is a situation that we are deeply concerned about and closely monitoring. And to give you an idea, of what ISIS wants to do. This is a photograph of ISIS in one of the northern, northern cities in Iraq. After they ripped off a cross off of a church, they put their flag on top and celebrate. And here is the English translation. The Islamic State flags lifted in Sinjar after the church crosses were broken off. This is the goal. Get rid of the churches. Get rid of the Jews. Get rid of everyone who is not Muslim. And one of the latest uh, news th uh, items that I have today is there has been spotted an ISIS flag flying in the old city of Jerusalem. This was posted on Eretz. Israel, if I pronounce that correctly, ISIS flags flying in Jerusalem's old city. And to explain to you that this is not an isolated phenomenon around Israel in the Palestinian territory, this was reported on July 4, 2004, ISIS style flags aloft at Arab teens' funeral signs of bloodthirsty terror outfit growing in the Palestinian territories. And now to the latest news. Hamas says it's ready to resume fighting unless Israel accepts its truce demands. The armed wing of Hamas called on the Palestinian negotiators in Cairo not to extend the 72-hour truce unless their demands in particular for the opening of Gaza's port were met and warned it was ready to engage in a long war. Now remember, there is a Turkish flotilla heading for the Gaza Strip, full of weapons, full of resupplies, ready to go. They want that port open so that they can rearm. That's their demands to continue the truce. And in my opinion, in my personal opinion, Israel should not 
allow any conditions for truce. So we'll have to see what's going to happen there and we'll continue to monitor this as it develops. But one last thing I'd like to mention here, the anti-Semitism around the world is increasing and at the White House, I'll switch over here so you can see it, pro-Israeli protesters were evacuated under, under police protection from the front of the White House. This is a picture of the far-left professor Colonel West giving an impassioned speech at a pro-Hamas rally outside the White House. And there was a small group of pro-Israeli demonstrators carrying Israeli flags on Pennsylvania Avenue across from the rally. And this photo is people shouting anti-Jew slogans, I should say, at small at a small counter pro-Israel protest in front of the White House. Here's a picture of the police vans which were called in to evacuate the pro-Israel counter-protest. The anti-Semitism is growing. The ISIS group, the so-called Islamic Caliphate that is growing, is working its way to surround Israel. We don't know if we're looking at the beginning of what would be called the Psalms 83 war. We don't know. But what we do know is that Israel right now is facing a threat. And Israel right now is dealing with the buildup of forces all around Israel to the north, to the south, east, and with the flotilla coming in from Turkey you can see that Israel is indeed surrounded on all sides. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Don't forget. And also make sure to lift up the Christians in Iraq and the surrounding areas which are facing great threats, which are suffering greatly just for being Christians. God bless. We'll see you next time.